Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans, with a big emphasis on the good. It's a victory Monday for the boys in the Honolulu Blue, my Detroit Lions grabbing the W, which feels so freaking fantastic, and that's good because, man, oh man, was this weekend wild. We have so many strange, crazy, and honestly, illegal things to talk about in this video. I hope you are buckled in and ready. Happy Monday, my crew. What's going on? It's Zach from Switch Force, and we ready to rock and roll. I'm going to start simple. I want to warm up. It's Monday, all right? We got to get the juices flowing. Oatmeal Dome, popular data miner. Data mine some Splatoon 3 Salmon Run alternate modes. All right, this is interesting. Pair, Underground, and Contest. Now, he's not sure if these are specific modes or maybe events, sort of like the big run. We've seen that tease where the Salmon Heads sort of take over the city. Maybe Pair, Underground, and Contest are also some sort of special event, but it does seem like Salmon Run is going to be a focal point of upcoming content, and then it's going to get expanded upon, which I will say, uh, maybe they should have done from the get-go. But then you wonder, like, all the hardcore people that talk on YouTube about how, man, there's not enough new in Splatoon, man, they pale in comparison to all the people that bought the dang game, and it's always fascinating to realize that because gaming is so widespread now, especially on something like the Switch, we, the people that talk about it on YouTube or Twitter, we're the minority. The majority just go out there and, and play the games, but they're also going to be able to play other people's versions of Salmon Run, apparently, because it looks like now Salmon Run is getting a scenario mode where you can upload your run, like your parameters, the randomized parameters and bosses and weapons, so that other people can play your exact run. Monday. Uh, apparently it says that there's going to be, it's similar to replays, uh, your own scenario, you can download others via a scenario code, and there's going to be like a lobby, it looks like. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, team contest mode. So lots of stuff going on for Salmon Run. We know Splatoon 3 is due for many an update, and they're going to be keeping that rolling for like two years. Plus they have a big paid DLC. The game is selling like gangbusters. It ain't going anywhere. Thumbs up for the Squid Kids. This one is perfect for me. Two things I love theme parks, and Donkey Kong. One thing Nintendo doesn't love, Donkey Kong, because still no new game on Switch, even though apparently EPD Tokyo is working on it, but they do love theme parks. And we now have a big leak about the Donkey Kong roller coaster and like a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown, including some really fun, awesome elements like animatronics in the queue for Squawk the Bird, Parrot, and Cranky Kong. And Cranky Kong is going to talk at you and probably heckle you, which sounds great. I want to be heckled by Cranky Kong. The roller coaster is due to be debuted in Japan at Super Nintendo World and eventually in the States in Florida, I believe. But it is going to be a minecart themed ride with all sorts of interesting, brand new, cutting edge ride elements to make it feel like you are jumping over the track, dropping off the track, and just really imbue a sense of danger. Although this is a family coaster, so it's not going to go super fast. But I think the unique elements, the animatronics, there's supposedly story bits as well in there, are going to make this a tentpole ride for Universal, and of course, the best darn Donkey Kong ride ever, and maybe even better than the Mario Kart ride, and the best Nintendo ride ever. Cannot wait to go. I'm taking y'all with me to Super Nintendo World when it opens here in California early next year, but for now, man, this sounds so darn cool. What's not cool is massive leaks. Now, I'm not talking about the kind where Jeff Grubb is like, Twilight Princess is coming to Switch. No, I'm talking about the really nefarious evil kind, where somebody hacks in and gets access to, say, 90 videos from Grand Theft Auto 6, only one of the most anticipated games in the history of planet Earth. Yep, that's what happened this weekend. Over 90 videos were posted by a hacker, and man, this person was just bold and ballsy. Because you know this is dangerous behavior, right? You know Rockstar is going to go after them and punish them to the full extent of the law because what they did was pretty evil. Now, they claim to have GTA 5 and GTA 6 source code and said they were considering selling GTA 5 source code. This was a bonanza of bananas. It was just crazy chaos for many hours on Sunday as screenshots and videos of in-development GTA 6 leaked, and it was all confirmed real. This wasn't just like some big guffaw. No, this was actually like, dude, you're seeing GTA 6. And it was really interesting the timing of this because Nintendo and Kit and Krista had a little tiff of their own. And you have to just think about how this kind of massive leak affects a fan base and affects the company. Now, this morning, Rockstar responded and it seems like, well, at least they're trying to play it off like it's not as big of a deal 
as it really was. They basically said, we recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services, nor any long-term effect on the development of our ongoing projects, which is, that's the best, that's Golf Clap, okay? The studio and all the people involved, the humans, are gonna be able to carry on and the game is gonna be able to carry on. And it seems like the source code maybe actually wasn't stolen because that would affect long-term development or maybe they're just trying to act like everything is cool. Either way, they've acknowledged it, it's real. And they say that, hey, they're gonna do their best to move forward for this. And it really just is sad because this is people's lives, people's hard work. And the reaction is kind of insane because the reaction isn't, oh dude, I'm so excited for GTA 6, hope it comes sooner. Much of the reaction is, this game looks like crap. And I was thinking about how if this was a Nintendo leak, it would be a totally different world, I think. Okay, because here, a lot of the frustration is targeted towards Rockstar themselves being like, this game looks butt, what are you doing? This is terrible. If it was Nintendo, all of that would be targeted at the leaker. Think about if Tears of the Kingdom leaked with 90 plus videos, story elements, all sorts of things. I don't think anyone would doubt that the game is going to end up amazing, even if there were placeholder animatics and all sort of different effects missing and the gameplay looked a bit rough. No, instead people would be so angry that their beloved was spoiled for them. Or let's say it was Metroid Prime 4. People are very eager to get a look at Metroid Prime 4, but I think there would be extreme eagerness, like, oh my god, this is real, it's looking amazing, it's going to be great, even if it's just in development, like, it's, it's coming, but shame on you, leaker. Shame on you, hacker, for doing this. I think that just speaks to Nintendo's, one, beloved fan base. How grand they are, and how they stick together, and how they just really love the developers and love the games. And two, by Nintendo not focusing on graphics for so long, you run into a situation where the graphics don't matter as much. And so people don't get so hung up on the tech, they get hung up on the characters and the gameplay. And if you think about it, maybe that's what video games are meant to be. Don't get me wrong, I love beautiful graphics and I love the showcase power of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, but it is something cool that Nintendo Switch, I know if there was a leak, some people would say, oh, the trees look bad. They always say that, even in the finished games, right? The Pokemon games. But people would be like, wow, gosh, I don't want to look. Or they'd be like, oh my God, it, it's real. And you can tell like, okay, Link has a new power. His Sheikah Slate is back in a new way, and the tears, oh my gosh, Metroid Prime, that's a new arm attachment. There would be just murmurs and enthusiasm, and then direct at the hacker, like, shame on you. And then Nintendo would probably literally drag them into a hot air balloon above the Atlantic Ocean and dangle them there until they revealed how they did it. Because that's how apparently Nintendo is. Their ninjas are fierce, and don't get me wrong, Rockstar and Take-Two are going to go after this person. They will get this person, and if they're able to find them and isolate them, they will use whatever methods of legal action they have, because it's just not cool and it should not be done. Like I said, a very different kind of leak than someone being like, oh, I, I heard about F-Zero, right? This is totally uncool. And then you have, at the same time, just such ironic timing, Kit and Krista, who are former Nintendo personalities, talking about how Nintendo is uncool, or specifically the Pokemon company. Now, this story was very interestingly right around the GTA leak, talking about how the Pokemon company is against Nuzlocke runs in Pokemon games. Now, I've never met Kit and Krista. I have nothing, nothing really to say about them because I don't know them. I've just seen them do fun stuff on Nintendo Minute. But this was confirmed to not be true. They said the Pokemon company views this as the same as a ROM hack, which seems very odd considering a Nuzlocke run is self-imposed restrictions and has nothing to do with hacking or ROMs or emulating or anything, like not even on the same caliber. We're talking about like, ooh, a fun way to make a YouTube video versus hacking. You see, like, they're not even close, yet Kit and Krista say the Pokemon company viewed them as the same and they almost got fired over it. Now, Joe Merrick, who is the runner, the main man over at Cerebi.net, decided to dive deeper. And he says that he got an official statement from the Pokemon Company International about this. And their statement is, quote, We do not have any issues with fans or creators playing the games with Nuzlocke rules. Which makes sense, because A, there's tons of them on YouTube, and B, they can't punish you for making the game harder for yourself? I 
what? Like, it doesn't even make sense. And now, I don't know, maybe Kit and Krista are kind of just blurring the lines because they were getting in trouble for doing it, like, on official Nintendo channels. Like, maybe they devised a, hey, we're going to make a series, and they're like, no, no, you can't do that. We, we don't like that. We, we're really against that. I don't know. They've said some stuff with their podcast that seems a little bit out there. I don't know. I I didn't work at Nintendo. I don't know what they experienced, but yeah, uh, this was just weird that one, it's about like the strictness of a company as we're dealing with like, oh my gosh, one of the big blow open leaks of a major company. And I know Nintendo would, they, they're really hardcore about leaks. And I will tell you that I have back in the day talked to Nintendo PR about how they hate ROMs and hacks and things of that sort. Like they are big time against that. And you know, in different situations, it makes sense. But I've never heard anything about them like controlling the way you play a game. I will tell you, Nintendo is incredibly strict and has very strange rules. And a lot of their stuff is like nuanced and hyper micro detailed and very just like da, 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 down the list. You got to check it all off. But this seemed bizarre to me from the beginning. And then I don't know, Joe Merrick, he is very in the know with Pokemon and he is very connected. And I think that his statement is probably true. He says, call me a liar if you want, but this is straight from TPCI's mouth. We do not have any issues with fans, creators playing the games with Nuzlocke rules. So I think that one is kind of a big misunderstanding. The GTA one though, again, like think about if this was a Switch game, it would be a very different story, wouldn't it? And then I guess the follow-up is if there was a massive leak of this scale for Tears of the Kingdom or Metroid Prime 4 or Mario Odyssey 2, would you look? Because I feel like everyone wants to look because they're so eager for GTA 6 and they're so desperate for it. But I feel like there's some sort of special sauce with Nintendo stuff where a lot of you wouldn't want to look. A lot of you wouldn't want to see and a lot of you again would be angry at the leaker like you're ruining this for me. Sometimes people even get angry at YouTubers for posting stuff on launch day if it's too deep in the game. So goodness gracious, imagine if someone dropped 90 plus videos of Tears of the Kingdom today or actually be like years ago because GTA 6 still ain't coming for years. Just a very mind-boggling crazy situation. Hopefully Rockstar is able to get it under control. Hopefully it does not continue to happen. Hopefully GTA 6 is great and hopefully we never have a leak of this size for something from Nintendo and we continue to just have random rumors that may or may not be true because those are I feel pretty harmless in the grand scheme of things and this one right here can be pretty harmful depending on how it's looked at how it's seen what spreads and how much access and information the hacker actually was able to obtain so there you have it a mega monday show for y'all a lot of crazy stuff happening over the weekend and a grand week ahead we're also approaching episode 400 and i gotta just say thank you i got some super cool stuff planned it's in the uh, it's in the stars a little bit of astrology coming our way it seems like things are just destined to deliver us to 400 so stay tuned for that i'll see y'all on the next video until that time stay safe stay healthy stay happy stay positive out there love and appreciate you so much thanks again switch force out